My name is Avishai Woplansky. I'm one of the co-founders and the CTO of Galileo Wheel from Israel. And uh, also I'm the inventor of the cup wheel technology. And we will talk a little bit about uh, um, the concept and why we call it a cup wheel. Um, and the reason we call it a cup wheel is because the, the principle of working comes from the cup shape. Um, and we will start with the standard tires. You know, a tire is basically a casing that contain air, which we use this air to suspend the ride on, on, on the surface. The, the air is a gas that able to compress and this acts like the first mean of suspension for any vehicles. But if we want to gain bigger footprint or we want a softer ride, we use lower air pressure. Makes everything more flexible, but at the same time, we are losing some of the rigidity, the lateral stiffness that is necessary in order to control and maintain uh, uh, steering ability of the vehicle. What we are doing with this cup shape is we are taking advantage of the fact that this shape is very flexible, as everybody knows, everybody held a, a paper cup, very flexible in this direction, and actually, you can see it is almost looks like a track. So we can control the amount of flexibility. You can imagine that if you, if we fill this with air, we can control how much the formation we want of this shape. But all that has nothing to do with the stiffness of this shape on this direction. So if that would be a wheel, it would be as flexible as I want by controlled by air pressure, but maintain the same stiffness at all times. Non-proportional stiffness in one direction versus very high flexibility in the other direction. This is the whole principle of this tire. And this is the cone shape. There are two, two cups uh, into each other in, in, in philosophy. One cup and the edge of the other cup. And uh, the unique design allow us to inflate this shape, this, this uh, casing, without having it bulging out. And once we achieve that, we gain lots of properties. Among them, um, obviously, the large, uh, big footprint, as you can, you can see in the real tire. Um, also, um, <clears throat> this large footprint, obviously, uh, reduced ground, ground uh, pressure and soil compaction increases the drawbar capability um, by a significant amount of percentage depend on size and soil etc. Um, ride comfort is much better with this tire that would be maybe the first thing every user would would notice which is very important when dealing with skid steer like like this one in the back um, so um, Altogether, it's we may see we may say it's a as a product it's a tire. It sits on a standard trim. It's manufactured in a tire factory, utilizing the same machinery, the same production line. Yet in properties, it's closer to a track in its properties. So the simplicity of a wheel with the benefits or the properties of a track, if in a nutshell, it's made of the same raw materials the same semi-product as any tire. That's the beauty of it. We're utilizing the same production line, we same, same uh, uh, raw materials and same production methods in any that exists in any tire factory. Only we are piling up the things in a different way to create out of the same material a totally different product. Um, I want to emphasize another another thing about uh, the shape of this tire. Now, um, one of the major problem in some area in tires is, is punctures. Um, so, as I mentioned before, air pressure and lateral stability are not not any long uh, no longer connected. So, we can run this tire at very low pressure, even with no air, you can limp home. If you have a puncture, if you have a flat tire, you can limp home, you can fix it at, at a convenient environment. No more bring me, bringing all the, the rescue equipment to the middle of the, the, the mud, the field, etc. Um, but what is more interesting, 
is look at the shape of the tire. A normal tire, definitely with such deformation, you can imagine how would the, the sidewall look like just when it goes near to the ground. And it would be bulging out and um, you can imagine what a sugar cane or I don't know, a corn or some spiked spike that was left on the field will cause to the tire. It will make a slit on the sidewall, on the most vulnerable place of the tire. And a slit in that place would normally, uh, the meaning would be a total loss for the tire. These are tire about four, few thousand uh, of thousands of dollars for each tire. Now look at this. What we really care is about, about the tire is this. Okay, this is what touches the, the ground. But if you pay attention, if you look here, this is nothing sticking out. There is no bulging out of anything here. So the tread is actually protecting the sidewall. Now, not only it's not, it is protecting it, it's not adding anything to the overall width of the machine. It's not adding anything to the overall width of the tire, which may sometimes look how close the machine to the tire is. If that was a normal tire with big bulging, it, it would be very close to the machine. Not talking about when you're using duals and there is the kissing phenomena. No more for all that. Um, so first of all, it is very unlikely to get a puncture in the sidewall. If something really gets to the sidewall, the sidewall here is very, very thick, very unlikely to be penetrated. And even if it, if it does penetrate it, if anything does penetrate the sidewall, it is possible to fix it. Not like in many times, a puncturing or slit in the sidewall in a normal tire would be, as I mentioned, a total loss for the tire. Um, so basically this is it. So it's the same rubber, the same structure, the same rim. Different creature gives you bigger footprint, less soil compaction, better roadability, better ride comfort, better drawbar, more efficient, 